Right. 5 February 2021. And today I want to quickly go through what has happened today with the story of Susan Mutami and Temba Mliswa. So a lot of developments happened today. And what happened today is there was new information, which I just want to quickly go through before I wrap up. I understand today is a Friday. So I want to do this very, very quickly. So today, a newspaper called Zim Live produced an article which had a lot of details. And the most important detail that they produced today was that Susan Mutami was in a 12-year relationship with SB Moyo, the late SB Moyo. And they have a baby together called Tendai. And that baby is around two to three years old. And as I said to you, I asked Susan uh, when I talked to her on, uh, I think, two days ago, who was the father of her child and who was her husband. And she refused to say to me who was the husband and who was the father of the child. Now we know the father of Susan's child is S.B. Moyo, and there is irrefutable evidence that the two were lovers, they knew each other. And I want to show you a picture. And this picture is from mid-October. And in this picture, there is Susan Mutami, S.B. Moyo, and you can see the Australian ambassador and a hospital staff member on the right. So they drove together to Mnene for a donation which was done by the, I think it's a province called Queensland, which donated goods or, or hospital goods to Mberengwa. So this was going to be used in Mberengwa. So there is irrefutable evidence that the two knew each other, they traveled together, although S.B. Moyo was married to his wife, uh, Zach Che Person, Lois Matanda Moyo. So you can see her there. This was taken in November. And wh while this was happening, S.B. Moyo was very, very busy with many, many women. You remember that there was a story, a set of tweets by Jonathan Moyo, where he was accused of dating he is his PA. So you can see his PA here. He was also dating this young woman and she was staying at a house in Newlands, according to Jonathan Moyo. And this house office was um, being used to hide this young lady so that the wife that does not know that she was there, the wife thought that she had been fired, but she was staying with him. In, in, in fact, he was secretly seeing this woman. So he was very, very busy. And uh, this girl is called Lynette Mahlava. So Lynette Mahlava was also dating S.B. Moyo. So S.B. Moyo was dating three women at the same time. And it's not clear to me whether he was able to maintain these three women to, to be with them, to be with Susan, and then to be with Lynette, and to be with uh, his wife, Lois, at the same time. So maybe this is how Temba got a chance to, to get into the picture. And also uh, because Susan was obviously very, very lonely, she probably fell for Temba Bliso. Then I want to um, go to the accusations. So today there were a lot of details revealed. And I want to go through everything that the newspaper revealed today. Zim Live, you can all, always go there after watching here, to read the full story. So the first thing that they revealed was that, obviously, uh, there was a baby between S.B. Moyo and Susan from a 12-year relationship. When S.B. Moyo started dating Susan, she was just out of school. In fact, she said, in, so they were exchanging WhatsApp messages with Tim Melissa. She said he broke her virginity. She was, he was the first love. Of, of her life. So this is what she said to him, to, to Temba Mlesua. 
or to whoever she was talking to, there is a set of tweets or WhatsApp messages that were shared, which were given to Zim Live. When Susan was pregnant, S. B. Moyo personally traveled with her to Singapore to see Tendai being born. So that is one of the accusations. Then S. B. Moyo gave Susan US $40,000 in cash. And this money was delivered to Susan by an RBZ official called Morris Mpoff. And Morris took this money in four batches. So she took 40,000 US dollars to Australia with her from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe through SB Moy. And I'm sure we can trace this money back to state coffers. Uh, this is not money which was coming from from his businesses. Although I know for a fact that SB Moyo has got a thriving farm which produces green produce and this is sold in the United Kingdom. So he has a lot of money or he had a lot of money when he was alive. So it's possible that it was his money, but I'm just mentioning that this money was being transported by someone from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe in cash and it was given to Susan. Then before S.B. Moyo died. He bought a house for Tendai, his son. And as I said, Tendai is between two to three years. He bought a house. He wants Tendai to have a, he wanted Tendai to have a place to stay. So this house is available. And on 27 January, when he was buried, according to the newspaper, and when Temba and uh, Susan started to fight, a colonel in the army called Colonel Mbibi was going to help Susan to move a, a, a furniture to move into the new house that was bought by S.B. Moyo before he died. Then in terms of other accusations, Godwin Matanga, the, the police commissioner, he personally helped Susan to go to Norton and retrieve 7,000 bricks that we talked about the other day. So this came from the top. And then the final accusation is that Owen Muda, Nube, the state security minister, was working with Susan as she was running some errands on his behalf. But it's not clear what with these errands, it's not clear what he was, how he was involved with Susan. How did they, where did they connect? It was not clear. So this is basically what the newspaper said. And obviously, Susan got very, very angry that this information was revealed. And she, refused, uh, she revealed about three or four pieces of information that are very, very interesting. The first one is that Temba Miliswa had a relationship with parents Shiri. Right, I want to go a bit into this tweet. You can see the tweet on the screen. Temba Mliswa, what kind of relationship did he have with Parents Shiri? Obviously, you remember that before Parents Shiri died, I talked about this. One of the last people he fought was Temba Mliswa. And she is raising the issue here of the relationship between these two. Is she talking about the speculation? Today, there was a lot of speculation whether Temba had a physical relationship with parents Siri. I don't know. I don't think so because she tweeted another tweet. Uh, I, I want to quickly find this tweet. Right, so let's go to, sorry, these, these tweets are just all over. Right, I want to show you this tweet here. Did he also tell you how General Shwenga is suffering be because he wanted his downfall? Did he tell you how he paid off Stan Square's farm debts. So you can see that she's releasing information about Temba Mliswa trying to harm General Chiwenga. And you remember some time back, we received information that Parents Shiri was planning a coup. Was this related? Is this information credible? What she's giving us here, is this something connected to what was supposed to happen involving parents Shiri and Temba Mleswa. She goes on to speak about, uh, let's look at the, the other tweet here, which I wanted to, to show you. 
She says that when she came to Harare, she was staying by a house of someone called Peter Gamundani. So I checked down Peter Gamundani, and you can see this is Peter Gamundani. I do not know how he fits into the picture. Who is Peter Gamundani? Why is he letting her stay at his house? And is he really the brother? So th this is the information that she released today. She released a lot of information. And on top of that, she said Temba Mliso was planning to poison Emerson Mnangagwa Jr. But he chickened out. So this is one of the, of the things she said that Temba Mliso are working with people here in South Africa. And I assume that these people are members of the G40. She was planning to poison Emerson Mnangagwa Jr. But sorry, he was planning to, to poison Emerson Nangagwa Jr., but he chickened out. So she she came out. Indeed, she came out today and she said everything that she wanted to say. I don't think Temba Melissa won today. I think he lost. But I also think that he managed to produce a lot of information about Susan. To me, in, in, in form of conclusion. Let me say this. I think Susan Mutami is a very mysterious woman. She knows a lot of people in high places. And I believe that she has a baby with SB Moyo. So after I've looked at all the information, Zim Life's information is credible. The information that they've got here is credible. And especially this picture that I showed you in the beginning uh, of herself, on, in mid-October with SB Moyo together in, in Mnene. This picture, it convinced me that she indeed has a baby with SB Moyo. There is no way she was going to travel all this way with him if they didn't have a proper relationship. So between October, around 20 October, when she traveled with SB Moyo to, to Mnene, and the time she started dating Temba Mliso, around 7 November, something happened, obviously, because of the relationship that S.B. Moy was also quite busy with the, another woman, his PA, and also with his wife. I think she just didn't get attention from him, as much attention as she wanted, and she decided to move on to Temba Mliso when she got the opportunity. Why she decided to move to Temba Mliso, it could be because he's a popular person. But the issue raised here of SB Moyo having a child with Susan, I think it's credible. And if you look at what she says here on 14 November, she said she got citizenship in, that is around 2012. And if you look at the time she went to Australia, that means she had been in Australia around five years when she got the citizenship it's possible that SB Moyo actually sent her to Australia, paid for everything, because I said that day, between 2005 and 2007, there was nothing happening. You cannot find it on social media. Suddenly, she's in Australia in 2007. She's starting to do well. She's starting to, to look like she's having life there in, in Australia. And mystery, where she getting the money, uh, her father just died in 2005. What could have happened for her to get all that money? And my assumption is that S.B. Moyo took her in and became almost her husband. That's why you cannot find a husband in everything that she says. You cannot find who her husband is because S.B. Moyo was the man. She probably traveled a lot between Australia and Zimbabwe to be with S.B. Moyo. So S.B. Moyo, very, very busy with this young lady and leaving two young ladies with no one, with no boyfriend when he died. So that is the, the PA. My understanding is that she's probably pregnant or they were supposed to put her in the embassy in Cape Town. Now she's got nobody. And we, we obviously have Susan Mutami, very, very busy with a lot of tweeting and causing a lot of commotion as we speak but also without anybody. A lot of people have been dragged into this 
Owen Muda has been dragged into this issue. Uh, July Moyo has been dragged in. The young lady from Norton has been dragged in. This is going to be a mess, especially for Temba Mliswa, if it is proved that he was trying to kill Emerson Mnangagwa Jr. He's not going to get away with it. Uh, he's going to be made to pay for that situation. If he tried to kill Emerson Mnangagwa Jr., a lot is coming on his way. If he's trying to kill or to make General Chowenga suffer, he is going to, to suffer. He's creating a lot of enemies for himself, and, and it's not going to end well for Temba Mliswa if that is the case, especially given the accusations that are being made by Susan, very, very dangerous accusations that she's making. And she's moving in the circles that you cannot understand how she got there at a young age of 32. There is no way she can be. This, this story by Zim Life, to me, it makes sense. The, the guys have got credible information here. And as long as Susan is not out here explaining herself, we are going to believe what she said in those chats. I know she exaggerates a lot. You can see from when she's talking that there's a lot of exaggeration. But I think that the communication that she had with Temba, it's credible. All the tweets or all the, the WhatsApp chats that are going to come out, Temba has got his proper information. But she also is hammering him very, very hard. And she's putting him in a tight corner. I don't understand, though, if she has twins for Temba, what her plan is. If he gets killed or if he gets into, into jail, what does she plan to do? I also would want to know why uh, uh, Peter, I think Peter Gamundani is involved in this whole situation. Why did he have a in his house? Very, very interesting question. This, this needs to be explored further. What was she doing in his house? I also want to explore why the Australian embassy has got such a close relationship with her. What, what kind of links did she have with the embassy and what kind of links did she have with the, what would the, did the embassy have with the foreign affairs minister? I remember there was a story that S.B. Moyo was now starting a faction. What could have happened there? So we still have a lot. There's a lot that is going to come. These two are going to fight each other to the death if they are allowed to. So let's see what happens next. But from today's story, to me, Tendai, the son of Susan, definitely S.B. Moyo's son. There is no question about it. In my mind, I, I don't even have a doubt that that S.B. Moyo had a son with Susan, that he had a girlfriend in Susan for many, many years. They were, they were dating each other for many, many years since he was, I, I think, probably 18 or 19, took it to Australia and had a child with her recently, paid a lot of money, and then obviously died leaving her alone. Right. I want to quickly wrap this up. Uh, I want to look at Noni. Ah, Madara. Ano Madawena Mana Skana. Right. I, I don't understand. Uh, my phone is not so good. Uh, subtitle Yenu Irugu Domoka. Peace. Okay. When are you having Jonas to discuss this issue? This, uh, Jonas is back on Monday to discuss politics. This, what I'm discussing here, is deep. Deep conspiracy theories. Only Gambaku can do this. Uh, Jonasi is a politician. Where is Pugeni? Uh, Pugeni, I'm going to have him back very, very soon. Um, in fact, I, I wanted to tell you guys something. The, the by-elections, as I said last year, they're going to happen around April. That is my, my focus, around April, like I said before. And I'm going to tell you who we're going to be supporting for those by-elections. And you know, when we support somebody, we are going to really support them very, very hard. And it's not who you expect. It's a, we've made a decision on who we're going to support for the by-elections. Was an SBMO sanctioned? How was he selling his farm produce in the UK? 
this question is very, very important. I, I know he's selling his produce in the UK and I don't know how he's doing it. So maybe you could ask the UK guys how, the, how he's doing it. Oh, okay, he's dead now. But when he was alive, he was selling his produce in the UK. So I don't know how he was doing it. And I've got very, very solid information to that effect. Maybe he's not on the sanctions list. I don't know. Because remember, he traveled to the UK. And remember, the UK supported the coup in Zimbabwe. So maybe the Australians and the UK people, I don't know. Maybe they were supporting SB more. I don't know. Something is happening there. But the, the fact that General Chwenga is being said was in trouble with Temba and... Um, SB Moyo is coming up. I, I, I just don't get what was happening there with uh, Temba Mliswa. Why would you want to kill Emerson Nyangagwa Jr.? Why would you want to kill General Chwenga? And why be so close to Perrin Shiri? What was the plan there? This is very confusing, but don't take this lightly. The young lady's information that she's producing, to me, makes a lot of sense. She's got all the information. Temba was very, very close to parents here. But two of the people that I was speaking about are dead. That's all that you, we, we can all agree that they're all dead, the two of them. Then Tafazwa Maukaza, Maukazuva, Maukazuva. What I will do is I'll tell you who I'm going to support uh, when, because we've assessed the political environment, we've assessed all the players. I now know who is who. So in preparation for 2023, we have to support the right people and want to point everyone to the right side to support who is the genuine opposition. We now know and we're going to be revealing it as soon as the ZEC announces the deaths. So I don't want to keep going. I think it's clear SB Moyo had a daughter, I'm sorry, a son with Susan. And it's clear that they knew each other, they, they spent time in October together. And also, SB Moyo was very busy with other women, another woman, Lynette Mashaba here, and his wife, obviously. And you can see at the center there is Nyurongo, one of the pastors at uh, Makandewa's church. I don't know who's on the left. So th this whole thing is mixed in a lot of people. And we're going to see more and obviously, the Australian embassy. I, I don't know what they, they, they were doing with these guys. Something is happening there, but we'll find out very, very soon. Right, it's a Friday. Let's not keep going. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll try to be back tomorrow. We're supposed to have a sermon today, but our pastor was not available. So we'll try to have it on Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll be back again 